now I mentioned several types of hemangioendothelioma, but what about spindle cell hemangioendothelioma? You know, what happened to that tumor? Why did I not mention that? Well, let's talk about that briefly. Uh, this is a, a very interesting story and, and a tumor that I really like. So again, Dr. Weiss, I know I talk about her a lot, but A, I mean, she was a huge role model for me and, and very much influenced the pathologist that I am today. And also she described the vast majority, I think, of the vascular tumors that we're talking about, or she has written landmark papers on them. So in the 1980s, she described um, spindle cell hemangioendothelioma, and these were um, multiple regional nodules of tumor, and it was, it was thought that they had regional metastases, and that's why it was considered to be kind of a hemangioendothelioma or a low-grade variant of angiosarc. Um, but what happened is that she came back 10 years later, and they re-examined those patients and some others and found that these patients did not develop any new lesions, any distant metastases, no one died from disease. So based on that, they felt that maybe it's better to call this thing a spindle cell hemangioma. This is a benign lesion, maybe, rather than a hemangioendothelioma. It's just multifocal rather than having regional metastases. So because of that, spindle cell hemangioendothelioma no longer exists. It does not exist as an entity, and you should never use that name in practice anymore. Um, it is an obsolete term. What we now call them is spindle cell hemangioma. So that's, that's the, you get the thumbs up to call it spindle cell hemangioma. And they're important to know about because they are in sometimes seen in Mifuchi syndrome. And Mifuchi syndrome is the coexistence of spindle cell hemangiomas plus multiple enchondromas or benign cartilage tumors of the bones, particularly the small bones of the hands and feet. And usually the, it's very clear clinically that patients have Mifuchi because they have deformity of their hands and feet because of these numerous enchondromas. So um, I, I, it's not really important to point out that a spindle cell hemangioma might be associated with Mifuchi. Usually clinically they're going to know the patient has Mifuchis already. And most spindle cell hemangiomas are sporadic and not associated with Mifuchi. Mifuchi is very rare. I've only seen one case of it personally uh, in my career so far. So, um, and the important thing, though, about Mifuji is they have a risk of developing chondrosarcoma from their enchondromas. Enchondroma is that the hands and feet usually do not give rise to chondrosarcoma, but in Mifuji syndrome, they often do. So this is Mifuji, and you can see these nodular deformities of their entire um, uh, hands. And here again, and you can also see some spindle cell hemangiomas in here, as well as um, these large multinodular enchondromas with calcifications on the x-ray. And here's another example. So here's what spindle cell hemangioma looks like microscopically. And actually, I think these are really beautiful tumors that are very easy to diagnose because at low power, you see two zones. One area looks just like a cavernous hemangioma, big dilated cavernous spaces that look, looks very similar to cavernous hemangioma or a cavernous venous malformation. And then the other area is more cellular and looks a little bit like Kaposi sarcoma maybe, so kind of spindled and epithelioid cells in, in compressed areas. And from this power, note this, this is a little blood vessel. We'll come back to that in a minute. This is a really useful finding. See, here's a, here's a closer view from elsewhere in the tumor. The tumor often grows out of or even in the lumen of a large blood vessel. And so that's the theory as to why it's multifocal is that it kind of grows along inside blood vessels and that's why patients can have multiple lesions. And if you look, this area, like I said, looks very similar to cavernous hemangioma, but the cellular area is very spindled and also epithelioid cells. I think that people often don't notice the epithelioid cells because the name says it's a spindle cell hemangioma and doesn't talk about the epithelioid nature of the cells. But I think the epithelioid cells are very useful finding. And there are little compressed, almost slit-like blood-filled spaces. So if you're having a bad day, you could think of Kaposi sarcoma here. It could look a lot like that. So you can do an HHV8, which will help you and will be negative here in this tumor. And the other thing that's really helpful is this. This is a very unique finding. Remember how I told you earlier that um, uh, vascular tumors with epithelioid looking endothelial cells often develop cytoplasmic vacuoles? Well, here in spindle cell hemangioma, you have a tendency to get so many of these little vacuoles that they compress together and they look almost like little miniaturized adipocytes. They remind me of like little compressed fat cells. These are not actually fat. These are all endothel vacuolated endothelial cells, but they have this almost uh, compressed adipocyte or miniaturized fat cell appearance. And I think this is very characteristic. I, I usually can find at least some areas uh, in spindle cell hemangioma that look like this. Most cases that I've seen have this, and I've never yet seen this this exact look in any other vascular tumor. So I think to me that this is a relatively specific finding. It's very useful. So keep that in mind. It's a nice clue. 
All right. The other thing that spindle cell angioma can have is you can have these large thrombi that have a tendency to calcify, and so these are called phleboliths. And you can even see these on X-rays, on imaging. You can see these little calcified um, foci within the spindle cell hemangioma. Um, and recently, um, Alex Lazar from MD Anderson and a, uh, a big group of other people described that IDH1 and IDH2 genes uh, are often mutated in spindle cell hemangioma, both in sporadic cases and Mafuchi associated cases. So there was some debate for a while if maybe spindle cell hemangioma was actually a, a sort of malformation, but now because of this mutation, I think that's pretty solid evidence that we're dealing with a true neoplasm here. So I don't use this routinely to test, but I think it's an interesting um, scientific finding. 